the O. O is the origin of the BH curve. On one axis, we have uh, actually they have found this with the applications with the practical implication of this magnetic field. With the starting point, if with the increase of magnetic field intensity, external magnetic field that is due to the magnetic current. In practical, how can we produce the magnetic field using the magnetic coils? So, with this, we can show that at the starting point, it increases up to a certain saturation point it goes increasing and with the further increase in magnetic current it becomes constant if i decrease this i can get the change in the magnetic flux density and at a particular point i will get a remnant point or that that field is called the remnant field even if the applied magnetic field becomes zero the remnants of the magnetization remains there and that value is called retentivity of the material. Now, with the further increase in the reverse direction of the magnetic current, we can get, again I am explaining, we can get the coercivity of the material. That is, the applied field required to make the magnetization zero, the magnetic flux density zero inside the material. That is called the coercivity or HC. In the reverse direction, if I increase further the edge, then it will reach again to the saturation point and here we can see that in the again in the further direction in the original direction if we increase the edge we can get the saturation point again uh, here i want to show some movie say it is actually You can see here, if I start this, we have learned the domain theory of the ferromagnetic material. We will discuss it further, but before we start, we should we can see here that there are four domains which has the magnetic moment aligned in different ways. This, this uh, direction shows the increase of the magnetic field and here is a BH curve, actually the first quadrant of the BH curve. You can see here that with the increase in the magnetic field, the curve progresses and you can see the domain in the direction of domain which has the positive direction or which has the parallel somewhat parallel direction to the externally applied magnetic field that increases. If I restart it you can see it with very clearance that you can see the domain is increasing with the magnetic field. It, it, it has the positive or say parallel direction to the external field and then it changes it rotates the direction to the uh, magnetic externally applied magnetic field right this website is has a very good uh, collection of this type of animations uh, i want to show the another one it is actually in the another direction it has shown but it is shown with all the four quadrants you can see here the dominance of the magnetic field vector and in one direction and in another direction you can see the point is moving in the graph and you can also see the magnetic field magnetic moments its direction changing with the change in the applied field right now we can move to the ppt okay so uh, here you can see that the magnetization of the material this is m versus h graph we have learned the domain theory of the ferromagnetic materials that we have the uh, domains different domains in the magnetic fields in the ferromagnetic materials with the increase of magnetic moment in one particular direction the material is magnetized with the external effect external magnetic fields effect you can see now we can understand the hysteresis loop with the help of the magnetic uh, external magnetic field and with the domains theory you can see here that this material ferromagnetic material follows a non-linear magnetization curve when the magnetized from a zero field value right so you can see that at h is equal to zero we have randomly oriented magnetic field vectors or magnetic moment vectors but when it increases the magnetic uh, material is magnetized to saturation by the alignment of domains here you can see the domain walls are not defined 
but the domain walls are not changing but the direction of the domain wall or say the uh, orientation of the domain wall that is in the in only one direction and that is parallel to the external field right now if we decrease the magnetic field in the another direction at this point the driving magnetic field drops to zero the external magnetic field drops to zero the ferromagnetic material retains a considerable degree of magnetization as i told you it is called the retentivity or remanence this is useful as a magnetic memory device right each of the hysteresis loops components they can be useful for different applications so at this point it can be used as a memory device since it memorizes itself it remembers what which field is applied to it right so moving back to, back to the graph we can see again if we decrease h at a particular point where h becomes up up to a certain point that is hc that is the coercivity of the material we can see that b becomes zero so memory is zero the the internal flux density becomes zero that means again the random orientation of the domain walls or random orientation of the magnetic moment right again we are moving the driving field in reverse direction and we are increasing it so in the reverse direction they are magnetized again so towards saturation up to a certain point they will be moving with uh, say non linear nature the b is moving with a non linear non linear nature again up to the saturation and at the saturation you can see the direction of the magnetic moments all the magnetic moments in all the domains that is reverse to the initial direction and here you can see if i further increase the h then i will get a certain value of magnetization in the reverse direction and then with the fur further increase in h we can get the original value of the original magnetization direction right so what does this hysteresis loop shows it shows the history dependent nature of magnetization of a ferromagnetic material it has some remnant magnetization once the material has been driven to the situa situ uh, say saturation region the magnetic field then can be dropped to zero and the material will retain most of its magnetization so it remembers the history of the magnetic field given to it so using this most of the recent uh, memory devices are designed using this remnant property or using this history remaining history remembering property of the magnetizing material but one more property from this hysteresis loop is that can be found is the area under the curve actually if you have seen if we say this from energy uh, scenario energy perspective what we can see we are providing some of the energy in terms of the magnetic field and we are trying to retain it we are trying to get it back from the material but you can see that this area under the curve the area traced by the hysteresis loop the more the area traced by the hysteresis loop the more the energy loss inside the material the thinner the hysteresis loop the less the energy loss how we can find out the area under the curve we we should divide this area under the curve into small small pieces of unit area and then we we can count it say using cro or we can draw this hysteresis loop on the graph when we are performing the experiment we can provide the magnetic field we can measure the external uh, ma magnetic field using a uh, magnetometer and also we can measure the magnetization using different quantity different meters and using this we can find out the area under the curve by a uh, different method different analysis methods and using this analysis methods we can find out that how much energy loss is inside the material during this whole cycle of magnetization right so using this we can find out the area under the curve as well as we can find out the uh energy loss inside the material so the thinner again i'm repeating because it is a very important point from the energy loss perspective that the thinner the hysteresis loop the smaller the area under the curve and the smaller the energy loss the greater the hysteresis loop the wider the hysteresis loop it has 
a large energy loss ok but it has also its uh, say uh, disadvantages of the material so depending upon the uh, applications we can choose the material with different types of hysteresis loop ok we will we will be ending this session here in the next session we can see some of the more topics from the magnetic materials thank you